The West Penra Papers A Journey Through the Multiverse The Second Level of Learning HTTP colon slash slash westpenry.com Prophecy Paper Number 2 The Closing of the Nanosecond By West Penra, Saturday, October 13, 2012 HTTP colon slash slash westpenry.com, Part 3 5. Satan and the Antichrist I have not mentioned the Antichrist and Satan in this whole scenario here in Level 2, but they will both most certainly have their roles to play as well. Marduk has been pointed out a few times both as the Antichrist and Satan, but I have another feeling about this whole aspect. If King Nanner is the Christ, then everybody who is against him would be the Antichrist. Therefore, it's more like an archetype. The Antichrist would be the humans who stand in King Nanner's way, and someone playing the role of Marduk may very well be the scapegoat. But, it says in the Bible that the Antichrist will reign for a while, fooling people into believing he is the Christ. So yes, this is a possible scenario. I do not know who this particular person would be, if any, so I think we just have to look for signs. However, I have spent very little time on this issue for a reason. I'd rather see people put their attention on a possible invasion rather than keep looking for an antichrist who may, or may not even show up. It could very well be a distraction so we don't see the mobilization of troops, and other preparations for the real invasion. That could have been the whole purpose with the antichrist issue. But don't hang your hat on it, either, I just want people to focus mainly on the events that really count. Satan is a very old archetype and I would say he is a different person depending on from which side of the story we look at it. If we see it from the Syrian side, Satan would be anyone who endorses the Divine Feminine, because Satan means adversary, and the adversary to the patriarchal regime is the Divine Feminine. And on a deeper level, Satan would be the Orion Empire, Divine Feminine, and even Mother Goddess herself. Seen from the perspective of the Divine Feminine, the opposite would then be true. Now, this is all seen from the viewpoint of the ancient subject of polarity, masculine against feminine, and the old war of the genders as well, but is there a real satanic archetype, and even a real Satan? Also, is there a real Lucifer, Archangel Michael, and Gabriel, and is there a whole angelic realm outside of this boxed-in ancient battle? I would at this point not exclude that option, and I am currently looking into it. Level 3 will most certainly be entirely a spiritual level, with the intention and hope to make people think about who they are in a more cosmic sense, and what is outside this old battle and the old galactic wars that I've been describing in the two first levels of learning. Who were the original builders? How was polarity created? Was it purposely done by the Mother Goddess? Or who did it? These, and many, many other questions I hope I am intending to discuss in the next and last level of learning. 6. The building of alternative timelines, changing the course of the entire universe. The Syrians are still in charge over the corridors of time and believe they are theirs, they believe they own them. They are reconstructing the prime, and most important corridors and are organizing the new eras of existence, thinking they are way ahead of the game. They believe that if they can only suppress us enough so we don't wake up too much during the nanosecond, the only chance we have, they are still on top and can bridge us over the scratch in the DVD and be in control of what is going to happen on the other side. And not only that, once the new corridors are built, many forms of intelligence will be able to move back and forth through these corridors, while the Syrian overlords can decide which ones they will let in and which they won't. This has been a problem the last few hundred years or so because those beings who have been allowed to travel those corridors are the same beings who have been tampering without DNA throughout time, the Syrians, the King, the Dracos, the Greys. But there is another plan at hand, and by this time it is already completed. Back in 1994, the Pleiadians said the following, and I strongly feel that this is true. And hang on, there is more. There are secondary and tertiary timelines built so that if the secondary one is raided there will be another timeline still open. When the secondary and tertiary events are established and built, it means that there will be a major opening in the corridor of time. 
This opening will allow many to come through the so-called officially approved channels. They will find an underground movement and doorways that simultaneously open in many other directions. And here is the kicker. Above the Pleiadians are talking about that they are building secondary and tertiary timelines, independent of the original one, which the Syrians have controlled since they took over the planet. So the Lords of War can use the original one as much as they want for their own, selected buddies, while our helpers are building parallel timelines. This was in 1994, and then they said that these timelines were currently being constructed to offer a greater influx of energy onto the planet. This is all done in preparation for the primary event that I discussed in the previous paper. They say that the webs can be connected again, and everything will change on Earth. And it will also change all of time. They say it will, to some extent, rip a gigantic hole in the fabric in which we dwell. They say that whole universes are worked on and being cleaned up from pollution, because of misuse of energy. When too much energy is misused, the timelines disconnect, and holes are ripped in the web that connects a certain universe with itself in all direction, on smaller and bigger scales. In a universe like that, the Pleiadians say, you could go to the store, and when you came home, your home would be a totally different place, another reality will exist there. What is happening now, and has been happening for a long time, is that the Syrians, in total disrespect of the mechanics of the universe and the seeding of life forms, have misused energy to the maximum on this planet, all the way from the nano level and up through the dimensions, in their efforts to suck the whole universe up, like a band of universal vampires. Any energies that can be useful for control and conquest purposes are being sucked in and sucked dry. The problem is that they have manipulated us to become like them in many aspects. We humans are not consciously aware of what we're doing to the universe, but from the viewpoint of the universe, we are still doing it, and for that we are held responsible. If we've let ourselves be manipulated, we'd better wake up before it's too late. At the time of the writing of the book Earth Pleiadian Keys to the Living Library in 1994, the Living Library was still on a version of the primary web that's closed down by the owners, the Syrian Alliance. The library, however, is now guarded and inactivated. We can still take advantage of what's in there when living here on Earth, but these different libraries were supposed to be accessed by beings from other worlds as well, it was a universal thing. This is one reason why underlying corridors are being constructed, they say. It's much like a spider spinning new threads in the web. Apparently, the Pleiadians, and their teachers whom they call the Keepers of Time, and who in reality are the Mayan, have been busy connecting the web again and even spinning new threads in the web. The Mayans whom the P are working with, are not the human culture of Mayans who created the calendar, by the way, although these humans are descendants, hybrids, of another, universal group, which can be seen as another archetype, if you will. Anyway, according to the P, when the last stretch of time is completed, there will be a dimensional shift on the planet. Over the nanosecond, those who have been working on their spiritual-slash-biological selves have already noticed how they go in and out of other dimensions they have not visited before. Once the web is completed, one version of Earth will be catapulted into the fourth and even the fifth dimension, note here that numbering the dimensions is just for our convenience, like the P say. There is no practical use in numbering them, because dimensions don't work that way, they blend together and have no set boundaries. But for us humans, a numbering system can be helpful to better understand the structure of the universe. In the future, when we experience such dimensional changes, number systems like this will not be needed. There will be all kinds of shades of this new version of Earth, depending on the small differences in each person's personal multiverse, but the living library will again open up, and humans who are ready for the changes will be activated, feeling drawn to the library. They will suddenly understand what it is and feel the connection, and their own purpose in the existence of the library. The Earth Library is that of nature, from which we are born. It is the rocks, the sand, the plants, and the animal kingdoms. But there are other libraries as well which will eventually open up for us that look totally different from our own, primary library. Some of them may look like geometrical shapes, 
but at this point in time we will not understand them. Another version of Earth, also with its different shades, will go towards destruction, and it's that version I will concentrate on in the next paper, and finally end with concentrating on the ascending version in the last paper, curiously peeking into the future. However, my point here, and the kicker, is that the P, together with the Mayan founders slash builders, which are more proper terms for these beings, most probably originating from an ascended and much, much older version of the Pleiadian Maya star system, figured out that the problems the P have in our future could be traced to events that were created in our own human future, close to their present time, by the Syrians, something I talked about in a previous paper. The Syrians created the blueprint for their most important prophecies in our current future, for it to manifest around our current present, while the Syrians, when doing so, did it while being manifested in our past. Complicated enough? I hope the reader is following this. If not, please read this paragraph again from the beginning, and very slowly to make sure you see how this is done. These beings are what we in metaphysics call time jumpers, they can literally insert themselves in any time they want and change events at will. This seems scary when we think about it, but we need to remember that although they are able to change events, it's done on one specific potential timeline, and if they want a future event to come true, they need to control the players, us in this case, and steer them in the right direction so the majority stay on the outlined timeline. If not, people will change events all the time, and the timeline that was set by the Syrians will not happen and fade away as a potential timeline, not having sufficient energy to be kept alive. This makes the Syrians overly busy. They need the number of people for their overall purpose, but how can they guide such a vast population towards such a narrow goal, especially as people are waking up at the same time? Well, they have to tighten the control, without making people too suspicious. But it's not an easy task and they are losing control, because they have grossly underestimated the Lulus, and those working with us behind the scenes. Time jumping has been a luxury only Syrians have had here in near-Earth space, but recently they have spotted other time jumpers all over the planet, and this has made them go ballistic. Often, the FBI, CIA, NSA, and other letter agencies have chased time jumpers all over the planet, trying to catch them. They have even barricaded and isolated whole areas at times, telling the public a cover story about chasing a criminal or something similar, when in fact they are after time jumpers. And who are these recent time jumpers if they are not Syrians? Well, the Pleiadians tell us that it's them, and those whom they are associated with. They are here to complete the alternative time corridors, and this is freaking the Syrians out. Although apparently no time jumpers have been caught thus far, the Syrian overlords have a pretty good picture of whom they are. Now they are afraid their prophecy plans will be destroyed, just as they had managed to get the majority of the Earth population on track and moving towards their own destruction. Therefore, the warlords are looking for alternative options at this point, because they really didn't have a plan B, confident as they were that they could be able to complete their goal without too much effort. They had not expected intervention. The Pleiadians said in 1994. We are here to facilitate changing the past, in order to alter our present in the Pleiades, our version of now. It is being done to reroute and reorganize a tyrannical takeover that exists far in the future. In actuality, your past is racing toward our present, and yet we went into the future to change it. Eventually, you will perceive a very different set of memories because you will change the past of your universe. This is how things are. We have told you that we come from your future and that we came back to change the past. We are very clever. We are changing the history of the entire universe by making a parallel universe. This is what parallel universes are plans that shift the mechanisms of time from one point by changing the event. You can do the same thing in your own personal life. You can change your past as well. Be flexible as you learn to play the game. Now, 18 years later, I am listening to a lecture by the same group of Pleiadians, and they are talking about a unifying event that may occur this year, depending on in what direction the energies go. 
It appears that this unifying event will also work as a primary event in order to throw us onto a new timeline. I like allegories, because they create pictures inside our heads which can be helpful to understand things, so the reader can imagine sitting on a train going full speed, almost out of control, and in front of you, there is a fork on the train tracks. One track is going straight forward, the Syrian timeline, a second track, the secondary timeline, is going left, and a third track, the tertiary timeline, is going to the right. The train is now moving so fast that you feel something is going to happen at the fork, and you are not sure it's going to be good, the train needs to slow down. Then, just when the train is going to continue full speed straight ahead, there is an obstacle on the train track which the train runs over. The impact is enormous, primary event. However, although many people are flying out the windows of the train carriages and die, the train manages to continue on the straight track, moving forward towards the station, fulfillment of prophecy and machine world. However, the last few carriages go off rail in full speed, fly five feet up in the air, but manage to hit the rails just right again when they land. But these carriages, no longer carried by the train, instead land on the track going leftward, the secondary timeline, and eventually slow down and stop. The survivors leave the carriages, still shaking and shocked, and are amazed that they are still alive. But the world they now live in seems to have changed. It's like a totally different world, and they like it. This is basically what is going to happen. The train is the nanosecond, which is speeding up tremendously as we are reaching its end, but will decrease, slowly but surely, as the carriages don't have the train to pull them anymore. However, for a while they will continue by their own speed until they slow down automatically. The good news is, if we are believe the Pleiadians that the secondary and tertiary timelines are finished and have been for perhaps a year now. The P are very pleased, because they believe we have made it. However, they also explain what that means. Primarily, it means that they have been able to change our past, with help from us humans, so that the event in the past, apparently during the Atlantean times, when the Syrians decided to create the execution point around our current time when the prophecies were going to be fulfilled, is erased and an alternative timeline has been created. Therefore, this Pleiadian rebel group, who is channeled by Marciniak, have succeeded in their mission, because now they can handle their own present time, which is in our future. But what about us? Well, the Syrians are losing control. They can, however, still fulfill prophecy if they can get enough people to respond to their manipulation, but the perpendicular insert points they had set in the future, from our past, is erased, so now they have to improvise and work much harder to get people to follow them all the way. This also means they will lose a lot of people on the way, people who will see through their lies and manipulation and choose the left train track the secondary timeline, which is still open and ready to use, as is the third, although not needed for now. So, what the P say in the most recent lectures is they are very pleased with how events have unfolded, but we humans still need to work on ourselves, not to be prey for the Syrian alliance, although they are usually calling them gods with a small g. Many people, out of fear and convenience, will still choose the straight train track, leading to a machine world and that seems inevitable, but I am doing my best to educate as many as possible, with the abilities I have, so we all can make an educated choice. Whatever people's choice will be after that is up to them, it's none of my business, because we are all on a personal path, but at least I have exposed some stuff that previously has been hidden and is hard to find elsewhere. Here is the Pleiadian conceptualization for us. If the twelve libraries that you are a part of were all activated at full capacity, they would create a gigantic instrument in space that would connect itself through conscious beams of energy. This instrument could change the course of the corridors of time and completely alter the future universe by simply erasing its presence from where it began, without annihilating anything. This is exactly what they have done. Of course, in 1994, when this was written, it was poorly understood by people on this planet, and the P knew that would be the case. The P were clever enough to know that we would grasp it much better by the end of the nanosecond. 
So, in other words, the twelve libraries have been activated, all connected to our human chakra system, which are twelve, not seven in numbers, five operating outside the body. This doesn't mean that the knob will be turned on full speed in all humans and totally overwhelm us, but the gates are open, and now it's for us to explore, little by little. The Syrians are no longer in control of the living libraries. The Pleiadians are further talking about us reconnecting with our higher selves, our oversouls. While being slaves here, we have had no chance to reconnect with our oversouls, except periodically, when we've had epiphanies, or been guided. The latter has mainly happened with people more recently, while in the past, it was mainly done by artists, writers and philosophers, who were lucky enough to find a hole in the grid so they could connect and find wisdom. Many of these artists connected with these higher aspects by the usage of different kinds of drugs. As told in earlier papers, thousands of years ago, the recycling system was put in place, and instead of returning to our oversouls after body death, we were manipulated to go through the tunnel and continue towards the light. There we have been having our amnesia implant and shot back into human bodies again. Now it's time to start connecting with our oversouls and meet ourselves for many people it will be for the first time. The Pleiadians say that there have been some of us, and they are mainly concentrating on the nanosecond here, who have had quite a steady contact with our higher selves and made sense of this multidimensional experimentation, which is designed to provide a sense of unity in the future. What they are talking about is the part of the DNA which is the Namlu U legacy, the multidimensional part, which is our true selves. Soon enough, humanity is going to be able to explore the stars, the universe and all its dimensions and densities for the very first time. Most souls in this human soul group were born here on Earth and have never had the opportunity to travel to the stars. However, for some souls, who got stuck here after ENKI created the first manipulated humans, there are other aspects of self, of the Oversoul, who are already multi-D, and have always been, but these aspects of self have been out of reach for the most part due to the energy trap the Syrians created in a distant past. Humanity is rattling their chains and the chains are rusty and just about to break. Then we are free but only if we choose to. There are a lot of civilizations out there who want to get access to the living library again so they can change the course of the universe. They are very excited to connect with us once we're ready, although they understand that their energies are much different from those of us humans, who have been dwelling in the material world for such a vast time period, but they also know we are able to integrate, and in the future they are hoping we can all work together to change the universe to the better. The tyranny we have experienced on this planet is not unique, the Syrians have taken over many sectors of the universe at this time, and even more in the future, and especially on the timeline we can meet the Pleiadian group. The Pleiadians are under Syrian control. However, according to them, and thanks to us to a large degree, the timelines are changing and the Syrians are losing their grip. Ponder this for a while, because this is good news. Do I believe it? Yes, I do. I both can see and feel it happen. Instead of freaking out about all the insanity around me, I am smiling, because I can see what it means. It only means that the Syrians are out of control and they are desperate for the first time in ages. And they have all the reasons to. I have learned to see it from the Pleiadian perspective, this is what they have been working on since they arrived in 1988, and what I just have explained is the mechanics of it how it was planned, how it was done, and how it could become successful. I will explain more about the implications of all this in the following, last papers.